Hello, welcome to Minecraft Maker. My name is Theron, and today we're going to go look at Garden 2.0. Okay, let's make sure there are no beasties laying around here. I have a tree back there that looks like a creeper. I should do something about that. It's a little distracting when I come out of my house. Okay, so uh, there have been some updates. There's some changes around here. Make sure I don't have any. Okay, so this is my old farm and uh, it's a little too close to the sheep pen unfortunately uh, the sheep uh, unfortunately get out and get in here and trample things and I think everything's good right now um, I'm using I'm doing a, like a box container garden kind of like what you see in NPC villages um, I, I like the way it looks underneath these logs are troughs of water which help keep the soil hydrated and make everything grow faster uh, I've got along here sugarcane, obviously. I'm growing three things of wheat here, um, but you can grow anything. I put in three so you can do wheat, potatoes, and carrots, so you have one of each. And then two rows of the melons, the pumpkins and watermelons. Um, I'm finding pumpkins to be very handy as watermelon light sources, so I've been growing all watermelons and all wheat because I'm trying to keep my sheep and um, cow population up. Because you see, we, they keep getting out and uh, it's too much pain to get them back into the pen so I just go and kill them and you know I take their leather or wool or whatever so I need to breed up more and we'll do that later um, so over here I decided to build another garden it's about the same size it's actually one um, thing longer thank you um, it's so it's 11 long still 10 uh, still the same number of rows uh, You can make this a little bit longer, but what I've done you might notice there are stick there are pistons here And they're not sticky. They're just regular pistons So instead of going along and manually chopping out all different crops I can oh and, and instead of using logs I'm using jack-o-lanterns as lighting source uh, as jack-o-lanterns to cover the water and they also provide lighting sources so I don't need any torches around which is makes it a little bit cleaner and I kept accidentally knocking out the torches it's a little bit of a pain getting these guys installed because jack-o-lanterns need to be placed sitting on top of something uh, so you have to fill in the space put the jack-o-lantern on top and then get rid of it and at the end of the row then you have to little, do a little bit of quickie uh, work in order to uh, put the water block back underneath so it's a little bit of a pain but it works so um, instead of manually going in harvesting everything here um, look I now have a button and if I press the button whoa everything just pops right out and I can just go pick it up now I have to I have to manually replant everything so maybe that's 3.0 um, and all that's happening here is I have uh, pistons down on this end which are pushing the rows of dirt or sand um, and then a delay and then the pistons down at this end pushing it back it's uh, not very complicated at all and it, and it just makes it a little bit quicker notice that the pumpkins are still here the problem with the pumpkins are that they um, they are not actually connected to the ground that they grow on at least not the fruit uh, the vines if I push the blocks or the rows with the vines um, the vines pop out which isn't what I want I want to leave the vines behind and I want the pumpkins to pop out but the pistons push the dirt underneath the pumpkins and the pumpkins stay in place and stay intact so I still have to go do this I have a plan for how to deal with it. It involves sticky pistons and a fair number of them, and I don't have that much um, slime yet. So, or I may just have enough, but I need to I need to build up a supply of slime before I go and do anything uh, crazy. So I'm just going to quickly go replant all this, um, and and then we can go breed some some sheep especially because the sheep are getting pretty low um, 
And then I have to figure out how to keep the sheep from, I assume they're glitching out. Telephone. Okay, and then um, we'll plant more of the sugar cane. When harvesting the sugar cane manually, oops, um, I just chop off the top two. <clears throat> Which uh, leaves it to grow behind, but in this case, popping it all out doesn't really hurt anything. And you can see some of this already growing back yet, so having the, the water nearby really helps. And um, I sometimes find by the time I get through harvesting all the pumpkins, one has already popped back up. So they, they go pretty quickly. Oops. Oh, entrance over here. So let's go uh, breed some sheep. And some cows and then I will show you what that all looks like what the redstone part of that looks like all right hello sheep I'm sure you want some of this hello hello come on you can do it there you go Hello, cows I still have a fair number of cows still breeding the cows to get leather um, I want leather for uh, of course, making books for the enchantment stuff. I'm still playing around with that. Um, but also, I want to start making item frames. There we go. All right, so what does this look like uh, behind the button? Let's go take a look. So I got set up in my single player creative world. And um, this is a elevated version. So here, here it is. <laughs> Push the button and it all pops out. Yeah, nice and neat. So occasionally I lose a piece of wheat and I think it's going down underneath the pumpkins, but it's not that big of a deal. So here's what the red zone looks like. It's not very complicated. I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, the button, uh, button here, lights up this redstone, hits these repeaters, which lifts it up to the pistons. I have a double step, uh, two not not locks, two inverters to go up to the power of the pistons. The reason I have two, it's twofold. One is I wanted the button to turn them on, not turn them off, and secondly. Although I, it could have been designed such that the, the pistons were extended and it probably could have been designed the other way around. No delay on these repeaters. The repeaters are there simply to get enough power to these blocks in order to um, actually trigger or activate the pistons. Um, it goes up and then it comes along here and then I've got a couple of repeaters here which are here in order to extend this redstone, the signal down the redstone enough to reach the other end and also to put enough delay on it so that the front pistons are finished finished retracting before these are activated and extend. So I've got two more um, repeaters down here set to maximum delay. So between the, the, the three sets of delays, it ends up working out okay. And let's do it from the air so you can see the aerial view. So pretty straightforward. Um, now, how am I going to deal with the pumpkins? The pumpkins uh, are not actually that big of a deal. So here I have a, a small uh, four block long pumpkin patch and I've got a little pressure plate here which is instead of the button um, just playing around with different methods of activation. So if I walk on top, uh, if I if I step on the plate, it pushes sticky pistons from below the blocks where the pumpkins are, pushes them up. That does detach the pist the uh, the pumpkins, and makes them easy to pick up. Um, and this, in theory, could be automated um, by putting like getting rid of the torches. Um, by putting some sort of water source that would then wash the pumpkins into a collection spot. 
So I may I may work on that. It's a little tricky with the redstone because water and redstone don't really mix. Um, this circuit is not that difficult either, but uh, it comes down over here. It's just a lot more a lot more stuff. So the uh, the pressure plate is I think right above here. Triggers this redstone, hits these repeaters. Again, two inverters up to the sticky pistons, which are pointing up. So they fire up momentarily. Uh, this repeater is just to extend the signal over here. Same thing here. But resource-wise, it is per every block, you need a repeater and a sticky piston, which is quite a bit more than ha having um, two pistons per row. So on those other rows, which are 11 blocks long, um, I only needed uh, two regular pistons for the entire row as opposed to here where I need a sticky piston for every single block on those I would have needed uh, on my little sample farm there I would have needed 22 sticky pistons because uh, those are 11 blocks long so um, I may I plan to retrofit the garden back at home with this once I get enough slime. I think I have like 24, 26 pieces of slime, but I don't want to be left completely slimeless. So on a future episode, I will probably go in search of slime. I know where there's a jungle biome and I think a slime chunk near my away base. So hopefully I can go find some slimes there. I have found a few in the past. And hopefully I find a consistent place and can even maybe create a slime farm. So anyway, that's uh, that's what's going on here. I keep the oops, ah, I keep the redstone area covered up. Oh, and uh, one reason why I, I do it two down beneath, besides having wanting to invert the inverter, make it a positive. Um, I do wish Minecraft had a way of of triggering a strongly powered redstone source as opposed to doing this. The other reason is that I've got these water troughs and I have to keep the water out of the way so I have to kind of work around the water troughs and it makes it easier to go down too in order to do that. So that is that is Garden 2.0 and this is a preview of what Garden 3.0 is going to look like. Oh and look at notice I've got another guy already going. Um, one cool thing about this using the pressure plate is when I step down off of it, it opens the gate for me. I can just walk out. So, uh, okay. Well, I think that's it. Um, I've got a few more things lined up for next time and we will, uh, cover that shortly. So that's our garden and I'll give you an update when I get around to retrofitting the home base garden with the pumpkin pushers. Uh, but that's it for now. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.